Hey everybody, today I was going to make a video about Huizhou, the city that I live in, but as luck would have it, it's my day off and the weather outside is as glum as a pair of tits on a donkey. What? So instead today I'm going to open one of my birthday presents early. It's my birthday in a few days, so I thought I'd buy myself a nice little lovely gift. Nice. So let me introduce to you the DIY Raspberry Pi Retro Station Conglomeration. What this is, is a build your own mini NES package that allows you to play retro games. This little system can play NES, SNES, N64, Master System, Mega Drive, GBA and a whole bunch of other consoles. I think it plays pretty much anything that came out before the PlayStation 1. You can buy these kits on Amazon and I will put links in the description this time because with the Amiibo videos I didn't put links in the description and all the comments were can you send us a link. I also do get a little bit of money from these links now so if you don't want to give me money then you can go straight to Amazon and type in NESPI, N-E-S-P-I, all one word, and you will find what you are looking for. Now today I'm going to unbox, put this thing together, and go through the installation process, so that if you do get one of these, you'll be able to easily follow along with what I do. Let's jump a bit further in time, get this thing unboxed, and get on with the installation. So, in the package, we've got the Raspberry Pi itself, Model 3B. Make sure to buy this one as it's the latest edition that comes with this package. This is the mini computer that runs all of the software, which I find quite astonishing that this small circuit board is basically a computer in itself. These are used by high schools and robotics courses and can do a number of amazing things, so I'd recommend like, checking it out here on YouTube. We've also got the NES Pi case, which is modelled after the NES, the Nintendo Entertainment System. It's designed so that the Raspberry Pi just flops in and you have access to all the ports you need, like the USB, HDMI and Ethernet cables. A 2.5A volt USB plug and cable to power the machine. Again, amazing that such a small, powerful machine is powered by a micro USB. But then again, so are mobile phones and maybe I'm just getting a little bit old. Two USB SNES controllers because I'm looking to relive my youth and the SNES was the first console that I really fell in love with. You can also buy USB controllers for most machines and I'll be buying and reviewing a bunch of them in the future. A tiny HDMI cable and an SD card. The one I got was an 8GB one that had no name or brand on it so I've replaced it with a 64GB branded one so I can store more on it and I won't be too worried about it corrupting. This whole package cost me 479 RMB which is roughly around $75. So cheaper than the mini SNESs currently on Amazon. So we'll start by opening the NESPI case itself and it will reveal lots of little cheeky goodies that are on the inside. We've got this bag of shit. We've got a fan. Oh, that's saucy. We've got a screwdriver and screws, which I'll put here because try and keep them safe. Because whenever I build something like this, there's always that one screw at the end that I'm always wondering where it goes, like after I've took everything apart and put it back together again. So I'll just end up leaving it on the side and hoping that my computer doesn't explode. As you see, there's a cheeky connection board as well that connects the USBs and the Ethernet cable that you need. So start by slotting your Raspberry Pi in and lining up the HDMI port and the audio port. Then according to the instructions, we need to line up the eight pins at this end, on the right end here, with this connector cable here. Slot it in. It has to be at this end according to the instructions. I don't know if that's true or not, but I'm not going to question the instructions. That looks safe and secure. Then there's the Ethernet cable. Plug that into the Ethernet. It's a bit fiddly. And the USB on the instructions on the picture, it is this one here, the top second one along. So I'm not going to argue with that. I'm not sure if that's important or not, but I want this to go as smoothly as possible, so I'm not questioning anything. There we go, all slotted in. Time to just screw it all in. So first you screw in the two little black screws to secure the board to the unit here and here. Then we had the fan. There we go. Fan's attached. Where do we put this fan? Hmm. Oh! Okay. What well, these things here are heat sinks. Okay, so you need to be extra careful with this bit because this shit's really sticky. So heat sinks applied. Just got 
figure out what this one is. No instructions whatsoever for this. What is this? And where does it go? Right, we're gonna put this to one side. If anyone knows what this is, like in the comments, like where it's supposed to be, please, if you buy this and you put it together, please let me know, cause I am bamboozled. So the fan, once you've plugged it in here, there is a slot in this side of the cage, which you can put in and it comes with its own screws. So you can screw it in find the right find the right bit for the casing it clips in and there's some screws that can go in there as well okay so once you've got all that together you've got your two screws here to secure the board and your fan and everything's in place and connected up you can then close this and hopefully that's all done right, turn it upside down and pop in the last six screws. And voila, there you go, that took a lot longer than expected. It looks cool, does it work? I don't know. Let's get on to the installation of the software and move swiftly on because that took up way too much of mine and your time. So to get this thing running, you're going to need a couple of things. You're going to need the retro pie image, which I'll link in the description below. Win32 disk imager, which I'll also link in the description below. A couple of ROMs and 7-zip. Now if you download the RetroPie image, you're going to need to open it with 7-zip by right clicking, clicking 7-zip and extract here. Once that's extracted, you'll get a disk image file. Once you've got a disk image file, you can open up the newly installed Win32 disk imager. Make sure that the device selected is the micro SD card. So I've got it in F because I've got a ton of hard drives set up here. Click on the browse. Find the image file and then just click right. It says yes, I want to continue. Wait a couple of minutes, have a brew, chill the fuck out. And that should be successful, and you'll know it's successful because you'll see a boot drive and Windows will ask you to format the disk. Click cancel. You don't want to format this because you've already made your boot drive. So just cancel, exit everything, and now you're ready to boot up your retro pie. So once you've got your micro SD card in, it should load up like this, boot up straight away. Make sure that your gamepad is plugged in. It will take a while on the first boot up. Then brings you to the gamepad selection screen. Have your gamepad, hold A to configure it. There we go. So up, down right shoulder. When we get to left trigger and right trigger, obviously this pad doesn't have left triggers, right triggers or any more buttons. You can just hold the start and select buttons down and it will skip these parts of the menu. Once you've gone through that, you'll come to the RetroPie configuration screen, press A and there are all the options for Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, your IP and stuff like that. If you want to access the Wi-Fi then it's similar to as you would on the computer. You put in the password and it scans. It's got a built-in Wi-Fi which is also quite remarkable for such a small machine. And then the next job is to get the ROMs onto the system. Now how do you do that? It's actually really, really simple. So in Windows you can go to Network and find RetroPie there. Or type backslash backslash RetroPie into the search bar. And you go to ROMs and there is a list of all the systems available on the RetroPie. You are advised to use ROMs of games that you already own, which is why we're going to use Lethal Weapon and Casper today. Because they're ones that I'm pretty 99% sure I have at home. So you drop the game in the relevant folder. PSX for PlayStation. And once all that's copied over, you're going to restart the RetroPie again. And now this time when you load up, it should, fingers crossed. Then you have it, once you reset your machine, it will reset itself with the games that are available. So for example, I have one Super Nintendo game and one PlayStation game, so those emulators are showing. If I put more games in there, like Mega Drive games and Master System games and Nintendo Entertainment System games, they will work. For the configurations, you can just go to the RetroPie menu and to open a game you just press A, Casper the Friendly Ghost, press A again, press A and on first launch it will give you a bunch of options. I usually set the default video 
to 1080p at 60 frames progressive and that's just to make me happy go to launch click launch and there we go here we have good old Casper the friendly ghost I don't know why I chose this game but I used to really love this game when I was a kid it's got lots of puzzles and stuff tell me how I'm gonna set Get through all this nonsense. And there we have Casper the Friendly Ghost who for some reason eats broccoli. Just a key for the chest. Oh! Damn it, I always forget that. To exit any game, you just press start and select. And we'll, I'll show you the Super Nintendo emulation. So there it is, the RetroPie NES Pie conglomeration package thingy. This has been stressful. I hope that my instructions have made it easier for you to put this thing together. Uh, if you've liked this video, then please smash that like button. If you want to see more videos from me, then hit the subscribe button. If you've got any questions about this, then please pop it in the comments. Also, tell me what games would you use this to play. I'm going to play some Super Mario World, possibly play The Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time couple of games like that it's been an extremely long day and i am just ready for bed so remember don't do anything i wouldn't do as glum as a pair of tits on a donkey as glum as a Cock on a sparrow? Why is it anatomy parts on animals? <laughs>